beloved. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deeper water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled the boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on, you will fish for my so they pulled their boats up on the shore, left everything and from it. Good day everyone. Today we'll be talking about you with me now. And I am Alexia Rao. Our guest today is Brent Park. Hi Alexia. Hi Brent. We have five questions for you. Are you okay with that? Bring it on Alexia. Bring it on. Alright. So our first question. Based off of the reading. Mm -hmm. Try to help us understand Peter's mindset before the catch. Well, Peter's mindset, um, firstly, you have to understand his background, which is to, he's a tradesman, basically. And tradesmen just work very hard. And they are accustomed to hard life. And But on this period, he went out during the course of the night looking to fish and looking to get that income for his family, for his employees, um, partners, but yet they caught nothing. So when they miss a night's sleep, everyone knows that your body would be irritated and they would be frustrated by the slightest thing. A very difficult thing to go through. Exactly, a very difficult thing to go through. So when Jesus uh, met him by the boat, they were done already washing their nets looking to go home because you after frustrating time on work right anybody knows this you just want to wrap up and go home basically and this was his mindset so when peter actually when jesus was actually speaking to the people peter could be hearing that word but it wouldn't be registered because of his mindset you understand? Because he already had a disappointing night. So therefore, with some people, the situations that they may be going through, we may be going through, we could be saying long in the in the midst of someone sharing the gospel and still not yet. And the idea of fishing, I went fishing one time, I remember throwing the rod and the line everything into the sea. Some of my friends know about this. Yeah, that is an embarrassment. Don't tell nobody, please. Um, but I don't really like to do it because it takes so much time and patience and sometimes you end up empty-handed and you want to know where is the point. So I understand Peter's mindset, especially this is his livelihood, that he would be frustrated, right. he would be disappointed, and he just wants to pack up and go home, basically. A very understandable reaction, actually. He's going to want to stay there and continue to fish for something that's not in the water. Yeah. All right. So questions two and three are going to be one. Okay. All right. So the team, you with me now. Mm. Where did Peter understand this phrase or slogan from, and how can we relate to what Peter was going through? Okay. Um. The time when Jesus called Peter and said, let's row out into the deep and cast your net. Jesus is someone Peter didn't know. <laughs> yeah, he, right? And so Peter would come, came up to him and saying, but look, but master, 
we did this whole night. We toil the whole night and catch we didn't catch anything. So right after anything, there was a full stop and then he said but. So in between that it it understood that there was a pause in between his sentences. And because he was talking directly to Jesus, he would be looking at Jesus. And I can imagine Jesus looking back at him and saying, um, with his actions, facial expressions, saying, hey, you with me now. I want to hear what you're complaining. You understand? There's no, it's not, doesn't matter what your past. Know that you are with me now, right? And usually when someone says, says but mm -hmm. it means the canceling of everything they said before exactly exactly so peter right there understood that hey now it's time okay i understand yeah i with you now okay let me give this thing a chance and in our so we relate to us now have you ever went somewhere that you are restricted or forbidden to enter yes right so therefore you will see the sign restricted you will see a door closed and saying no unauthorized persons allowed right it's mm -hmm. other time we went to the president's house and we were well i was working for a company that under dell and we went to the president's house to actually fix his computer his computer and i mean some inputs, they understand the song and like, yeah man, I have, they have access. We reach by the boots, the guard would call someone and that someone come out and say, yes, they are with me, right? Wherever that person went, we followed. We followed that person straight up to the president's office. He wasn't there at that time, but we were in the president's office fixing the president's laptop, wow. right? Likewise, Jesus is saying, I am with you now. You, before you, you came with me, you could have reached your life up to this point. You understand? All the things you tried to solve the situation, all the things you've done to reach where you have, this is the point you could reach. This is your peak. But with me, there's a new door that could be opened with me because i have because he have access if we walk with him then doors will be opening for us because we are walking with someone who have access that should be restricted to us but because we are with him now hey i could go where he going i could do what he doing you exactly. understand i i could he could sign off on our paperwork and and give me and i have proof that hey I have access to this material or whatever. The thing is, walking with Jesus, being with him, open up our doors where we can't even understand where we could go. You think you are talentless? Be with God and see how much talent we reveal unto you. You think you have no money or, or you have no um avenue to get um income to help your family go to jesus you understand you think you need healing go to jesus when the doors are shut in you you tried everything to solve your relationship you ever tried doing doing um doing it with jesus you understand yeah. and he would i mean Yes, sometimes things would be difficult. I'm, so, I'm not saying things would be a sweet ceiling, right? But even in your suffering or in good times, once he is there, you would be all right. And Jesus is trying to tell Peter, hey, just trust me, you would be all right. I'm here with you. We're together now. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone should want to be here in that phrase. Every day of their life. Exactly. Okay, Mr. Valvo, we'll be going to break now. See you after.
Allowing us to work more towards his kingdom. And we should be overfilled with joy and gladness. We should thank God for all that he has done for us. Alright, back to you, Mr. Balfour. Yes, Alexia. Question 4. What was Jesus and Peter's relationship like before and after the catch? Well, if you observe, Peter actually call him master before the catch and then call him lord afterwards different things. different things and they are different meaning right and master is actually showing that high respect to somebody right because you recognize they are a person of authority right they are a person of authority or they own some uh they may be richer than you or they may be more popular than you right and this is of a respect basically because peter knew jesus by fire interaction little interaction before and he knew of him by name he knew of him by stature and what jesus is about basically healing people teaching preaching right and this is Peter uh, just knowing Jesus, right? Like you mentioned, you went to the president's house and yeah, if you had seen him, mm -hmm. you would have had a certain amount of respect for him. You wouldn't just say, hey, Mr. President. <laughs> <laughs> you would have a certain amount of respect. So it should be like the same amount of respect that Peter had for Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. Peter had respect for Jesus and that's why he allowed him to use his boat as well, right? And even he understood, okay, Master had given him a command to go out and cast the net again. So yes, he would respect that. Um, but however, when he starts to experience Jesus, that's why I've been telling young people, Try to get to experience Jesus for yourself so you don't have to rely on someone else's testimony or someone else's experience or someone else's word about something, right? But experience Jesus for yourself. Now, here's the difference between knowing somebody and experiencing it. At a time when last, last year I went and do skydiving, right? Now, this is not about somebody, this is about a, uh, a thing, basically, which is skydiving, right? Um, growing up, you always hear about skydiving. You always hear what it is about, you always hear other people's testimony, it's and other stuff, the dangerous, and thing, 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 and then seeing a set of people that's jumping out of plane, and it's like, hmm, I wonder how that might feel, basically, you understand? Yeah. But last year now I decided to go and do this thing, right? Between 7,000 to 10,000 feet, we went up. And even before we went up, it's like, uh, here in the, we get our orientation about what we have to do when we reach up and so on. And it's like, yeah, knowledge, you get plenty of knowledge, no experience, and it just taken a team basically. True, there were some people who were frightened, right? You understand? But that's that's okay, that's okay. But the highlight is, let me fast forward, the highlight is when we actually jumped out of that plane. It was the most frightening, exciting thing I have ever experienced. Well, I yeah. wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Experience. Exactly. So now, when I reach, when we reach back down on the actual earth, right? Maybe about ten minutes after jumping off the plane, Whoa. then that experience, I wanted more of it. I wanted more of it, and the experience carried me a different level that the knowledge that I knew of it before didn't really matter. Mm -hmm. The knowledge, what they will get of it will just confirm the experience of it. You understand? So, therefore, 
experience carries you to a different level with Jesus. You may know of him, a lot of people know of him, but it will carry you to a different height when you get to experience Jesus Christ. And this is what's happening to Peter when he saw the big catch. He, his experience by seeing this thing, wait, I was here hours before, whole night, trying to get this thing done, and now we have such a huge catch, ever, more than ever before, that I have to call my partners to help, and all our boats wanted to sink. You understand? It was such a miracle that even the partners and all were such an awe what just happened there, where all these, the school of fish came from. Who wouldn't be able? Exactly. And right after he bowed, the Bible said he knelt before the Lord, right? And said, Lord, flee from me because I am a sinful man. Different from saying master. master. He actually, from respect, he went from respect to worship. From respect this person to worshiping this person. You understand? By someone he hardly knew. Someone he hardly knew. Okay. But the experience just elevates that to another level. And that is the difference between their relationship right there. And for us guys, we have to experience Jesus. We have to search for that experience. You understand? The Bible talk about all taste and see that the Lord is good, right? It's this kind of funny example. If you see a biscuit being advertised on TV, right? You hear you see the person tasting it and eating it and so on and saying this is good, this is good. Delicious. Delicious. Yes, I'll say then they might say, okay, let me try this and they go on and buy the biscuit, they rest it on the table. A day pass, you ain't eat it yet. But it's still there, you have knowledge of it, right? And it's just there. Not until it open that pack and it take a bite. Mm. Crunch. Exactly. Then you could actually confess or realize if this really tastes good. So if the Bible say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Come on. We should need, want to experience Christ. It's not just about reading the bible or gaining knowledge or going to church as a religious thing it's not about religion it's about jesus you understand so and also there's another last point on that question there's a difference between there, there are some people who could learn via theory and practical yeah. jesus right there recognized that terry his speech his word while he was on shore wasn't getting to Peter. Wasn't getting through to Peter. It might be getting through to other people, but it wasn't getting through to Peter. And because of Peter's mindset, we could be there, you understand, in the midst of a word and not hear it. Right? And Jesus realized that Peter don't need to hear the word, but he needs to see the demonstration of the word. You understand? And because of what Peter went through, Jesus knew, just like how he knows everybody, what goes on in their hearts and their desire, he knew that a hey, fishing is close to Peter's heart. This is what he is about. So let me reach him on that end. And that's why they went out to fish. And he demonstrated the power of God on the sea. You understand? And right there, his demonstration brought Peter to another level. Now he can hear the word of God. And it was not only something that he liked, mm -hmm. but it was a practical, as you said. So it's something that he would have learned better from. Yes, yes, definitely, definitely. Final question. Mm -hmm. Why would Peter leave everything that he knows behind? It says that he, he just picked everything, he just left everything behind and followed God. Why would he do that? It's similar to what I just said, but also Peter understood what a lot of us 
I wouldn't understand it, right? Which is the concept of happiness. Wow. Serious thing. When Peter realized, but even before we reach there, Peter realized two things. The concept of happiness and also Jesus' response. Peter said, Lord, flee from me. I am a sinful man. He repented. He actually confessed right there, I am a sinful man because Peter realized I can't be in the midst of this mighty man. You understand? He had reverence for Jesus immediately because of what was done. And because of that and his confession, normally a normal human being would, would react by condemning. You understand? Condemnation. Mm -hmm. um, we tend to condemn people for their wrongs and not focus on their right. But Jesus loves to focus on the positive. He loves to focus on the right. He will acknowledge, okay, maybe it's sinful, but he will not continue on that road, on that statement. He, immediately, he will flip it and he will anoint you with something. He will change the direction of your thinking immediately. Jesus highlights that hey, there is no condemnation in him. You understand? Romans 8, 1 says, Now there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. To those who are in Christ Jesus. Right? After Peter said, I am a sinful man, Jesus said, From now on, you will be fishers of men. You will be fishing for people. Doing something you like, but Doing. in a different way. In one sentence, one sentence from Jesus, Jesus didn't condemn him. Instead, Jesus embraced him and anointed him with identity and purpose in life that he never had before. Yeah. One sentence, right? You will be fisher of men. One sentence. And right there, Peter realized that the concept the conception of happiness doesn't lie in the things that the world teaches us the world teaches us that happiness is all about hard work it's all about education it's all about career it's all about getting that car or that family or that house etc etc you understand and they keep on going materialistic stuff right it's not about that because Jesus highlights if you build your house upon the sand, come on, what will happen? That why we just call him the rock. If we build the house on him, it will stand. So Jesus is trying to say, hey, I shouldn't, he shouldn't be the icing on the cake. He should be the cake. And then everything else should be the icing. That's why he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things will be added unto you because he wants you to realize that he should be the foundation, he should be the base of everything. Right there, Peter realized that I want to start over. I want to start over life. These things doesn't matter to me anymore. After what I have experienced, this is who I should follow. And that will lead Peter to have better life. Exactly. Because at the end, then, when later on in Peter's life, even though it was a kind of uh, up and down relationship between him and Jesus, Jesus said, you will be the corner of the church, cornerstone of the church. And so said, so done. Right? At the end, then, Peter's life was, I mean, we're talking about him today. <laughs> right? So it was easy actually for Peter to leave everything behind because he realized Jesus Christ is the base of happiness. He is the conception of happiness. Happiness doesn't lie in how much money you have in the bank. It doesn't lie in people if somebody loves you or not. It relies on him. I went through 
a situation and for anybody else they might have uh, um, killed themselves or or run away or something but the fact is because my life was based on Jesus Christ I was able to and also when I realized that he didn't condemn me yet he still anoint me in a son and give me purpose same thing I'm saying to you he won't condemn you if you give him that chance in life and you experience him it's not just about knowing him it's about experiencing him and you recognize that he is no longer your master but he is your lord yes. and you start to worship him he will not condemn you he doesn't he, he's not about our life he's, a, he's about love he's about peace he's about giving you everything because he desires what who you are you understand and just take that step take that step and that's why you would want what to be the basic i mean the basis of your life yeah everyone should want to strive to learn from peter's example because peter left his mark he left a great impression yeah as you said we still talk about him today <laughs> yeah he left everything behind to follow someone he barely knew mm -hmm. and that's amazing actually thank you mr balfour for the opportunity thank you all right so we urge each and every one of you to pursue a relationship with god experience a relationship with god don't just love him learn to like him learn to know what he is about we have so much of things going on right now that we need that relationship with god it's no longer a want it's a need with that being said just want to Thank you, Lord, for all that you do for us, dear Father, Lord. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for guiding us, dear God. We pray that each and every one of us learns from Peter's example, dear Father, Lord. We learn to pick up everything that we know, every worldly thing that we know, leave it behind, and follow you, dear God. We pray today that you just lay your hands upon us, dear Father Lord. You are all great, almighty, all powerful, all omnipotent, dear Father Lord. And for that we thank you just for being who you are, dear God. We continue to bless your magnificent name, dear Father Lord. Continue to ask for forgiveness, dear Father Lord. We continue to ask for salvation, dear God. We continue to ask for healing for this country, dear Father Lord. For the world, dear Lord. Today we pray for all of our blessings, dear Father Lord. We continue to thank you for those too, dear Father Lord. In your name I pray. Amen. If there are any problems or issues, you can also contact us at nccfcrew at gmail.com or comment down in the comment section below. Please hit that subscribe button and the like button. See you next time.